Hi, this is the second part of a two-part video on why I chose an RV, what my thinking process was, what different types of RVs I looked at. This second half takes it from what I originally thought was going to be the one I would get, which was a travel trailer, um, through to why I changed my mind and what I eventually ended up with, uh, Class B, um, through to the purchasing of it and what kind of options I chose. Link to the first part is in the description below and at the end of this video. So let's get right into it. I decided if I was going to get a Tab 400, then the Jeep Grand Cherokee would be a pretty reasonable tow vehicle. And that's where things were at that point. I also spent quite a bit of time looking at the Black Series campers. They come from Australia and they are really designed for heavy off-road use with a fully articulating hitch. Although I don't intend to uh, explore off-road much, I do expect to go down some dirt roads from time to time. And the ruggedness of the um, trailer was kind of interesting to me. I did see a lot of um, bad reviews about the company in the US when they first entered the market a few years ago, but that seems to have been uh, turned around now. And there are a lot of really good videos um, on a um, YouTube channel by RVs of America, one of the biggest Black Series camper dealers in, the, in North America. Um, so I learned a lot from them. Now, uh, in the end, there were a couple of strikes against uh, Black Series for me personally, may not be for you. Um, one was the interior height, I'm six foot two, and they really are not designed for people that tall to be able to stand up comfortably in them. So that was strike one. Then there was also the fact that they are heavier than say the Tab 400 and other similar size trailers. And I would have to get a truck to tow it. And as I said before, I don't really want to get a truck. So in the end, I discounted them, but it was fun looking at them. As I continued looking into the Tab 400, I came across the little guy Max, which is similar in style to the Tab. It's also a teardrop, but it is slightly larger. And uh, I explored that looking at YouTube channel, um, what's it called, uh, Randy's Adventures. Now, um, I got to appreciate the little guy Max quite a lot, although it was a bit hard to go find one because the nearest dealer that had one was a few hours away. So uh, that, however, became my uh, preferred trailer, in my mind at least, above the Tab 400. So my thinking started to evolve again, and I was starting to get pretty concerned about towing. So um, it does take more effort, and you can't really tow around town. You'd have to leave the, uh, leave the trailer outside at a park somewhere, and then drive in the town if you're visiting towns. So if I didn't want to get a trailer, then what about going to get a Class B? Uh, smaller than a Class C, but maybe it would be big enough, but it would come with an engine. Then I thought, well, what about keeping it really simple and just using my tent? I've had a tent for years. I've got a nice size two-person tent. Um, I'd have to get a few more accessories. I don't have a camping bed for it anymore. I'd have to get some kind of sleeping mat, get a decent chair, get a slightly larger set of cookware, um, but also it would be pretty cheap. Well, it's going to be a lot cheaper than getting an RV of any kind. I even put the tent up inside the house to see if I could sit in a chair inside the tent for a rainy day, um, which I could. So I did think about this as a possibility. And then I thought, well, what if I go even smaller and I just use the car? Uh, there's quite a few really interesting videos uh, on YouTube about people who explore around the country just in their car. So one day, though, at an orienteering event, it was, it was a wet, miserable day. I came back from the race, changed in my car, and just found that it was so cramped changing in the car. So I really felt like uh, just using the car wasn't going to work. And um, the tent, uh, still I want a bit more, something I wanted a little, something a little bit more comfortable. I was also a bit concerned about camping in bear country with just a tent. So in the end, I concluded that the tent and just the car were out. I needed something a bit bigger and a bit more luxurious. So I started exploring Class B in more detail. And they have all the 
features that you need uh, in terms of uh, somewhere to eat, somewhere to sleep, bathroom, somewhere to cook. Uh, the one constraint for me would be, could I get over the small size of the bathroom? I'd have to sort of put up with that. When I say it's bathroom, it's really more like a bath closet because they're typically almost exclusively a wet bath where you have the uh, toilet and the shower in one. And I wouldn't be able to stand up in the, in the toilet bath area. So uh, that would be the, the biggest compromise. There are other things to consider with a Class B. Uh, as with any RV, it's sort of what kind of power have you got? How much uh, batteries have you got? Do you have solar power? Do you use a generator? Do you have lithium batteries um, or not? Uh, do you get a diesel powered vehicle? Do you get a gas powered vehicle? Uh, I split them into the, the vehicle chassis categories of Ford, Dodge and Mercedes. There aren't that many Class B manufacturers in uh, North America, so I ended up with a, a reasonable size that I could take a look at in more detail. So ignoring custom builds, when I looked at the different RV manufacturers, I started getting quite interested in the Winnebago Travado and spent some time looking at YouTube channels from uh, called uh, 30 and a Wake Up and um, another one, was it called? Um, Go Small, Live Large where they were talking about uh, life in their Travado vans. Now it's built on a Dodge Ram Promaster chassis. I was uh, particularly interested in the K floor plan. They have two types of floor plan. The K has twin beds leading into at the back, the, uh, the bathroom area, and it had a nice airy open feel about it. After a few weeks, the local, one of the local RV dealers, Flag RV, actually had a Travado so uh, I went with my wife Claire to see it and you could see how serious I was getting now because if the wife was going to come along with me that meant things were getting a bit more serious. So we took a look at it and there were a couple of things I didn't like about it. One, well two or three really. Um, the, uh, the cover on the twin beds was pretty rough for me. Um, that was an easy fix, just put a cover over that. But uh, the beds were very wide, which meant sitting on them as a, as a couch to lounge in was pretty uh, awkward, I felt. The, height, the ceiling height wasn't great. I could just about manage it, but it wasn't great. And what I really didn't like was the driver's position. For a six foot two person, I just couldn't get comfortable in it at all. So uh, that left me with a bit of a problem because I thought this one was it. But when I went to see it, I realized it wasn't it. So what was I going to do next? So actually what I did next was dabble for a while in uh, looking at truck campers. And the, one of the advantages of a truck camper over a Class B is that the camper part is completely on top of the truck. So with a Class B, you might have things below the bed of the, the van, such as a generator or batteries or some of the water tanks. So you're gonna have more ground clearance with a truck. And even though I'm not into serious off-roading, that was kind of appealing. However, one of the challenges for me with a truck was getting into and out of the bed. With I have arthritic knees and I thought that might be a bit of a challenge. I also wasn't too keen on the, um, the separation between the, the living area in the camper and the, the cab in the truck. And then um, you gotta buy a truck. And as I said before a couple of times, I'm not that interested in buying a truck. So I ended up discounting them, but again, had a lot of fun just, just looking into them, just doing some research on them. So I went back to looking at RVs, uh, Class Bs, and now I came across the Coachman Beyond. I'd been aware of it, but now I looked at it in more detail. They have similar floor pan to the K model of the Travado, um, but they also had one with a, a couch at the back that turned out into a bed to sleep in. So I could laze around on the couch, which was pretty appealing. And as a uh, manufacturer, they have um, a very good reputation for quality and an excellent reputation for customer service. So those things are um, very important. I like that it was on a Ford chassis um, because that's quite, uh, quite a bit taller than the, than the Dodge. So I did plenty of research on the Coach from Beyond, looking at their website, um, exploring YouTube channels such as Camping Coasty, and joining their users um, 
Facebook group page. There were several videos of tours of the Coachman factory with talks by the senior staff there, which was um, very impressive. So I was a bit concerned uh, about the feeling of claustrophobia in the one with the couch at the back because it has the bathroom in the middle. It's certainly not as open a feeling, an area feeling as the Chavado K model or indeed the, the equivalent model in the um, Coachman. So after a while it turned out that the local RV dealer had a Coachman Beyond coming in. So as soon as that came in I went down to take a look at it and what I found was very pleasantly surprising to me. I did not feel claustrophobic at all with the bathroom in the middle. Uh, the couch was great to sit in and uh, was perfectly big enough for me to, to lie in. And the driver's seat felt great. So uh, I, you know, I'm not going to say it was love at first sight, but it seemed to tick all the boxes. And um, I now thought that this was really going to be the one that I felt most comfortable with. So uh, I reflected on this viewing over the next few weeks um, and really had then to make the decision, do I get one or not? So if you're going to get an RV, you have to go into it with the right kind of mindset. One of them being that things are going to break. RVs are not built to the same quality as vehicle manufacturing. It's not as automated a process. It's more like building a, a house. It is really a tiny house. And also every time you take it down the road, it's like your house is going on a small earthquake. So you got to be prepared for things to break and things to need maintenance, which is why it's important to choose a dealer that you feel comfortable can do the maintenance work and a manufacturer that you feel comfortable stands by their products and also has great customer service as well. So at least with a Class B van, the whole of the body of the van was built to vehicle manufacturing standards, so that gives it an edge up over a Class C. So the decision to buy one or not uh, really came down to the fact that I've got uh, arthritic knees and uh, a bad back. Um, I can still hike and orienteer and ride a mountain bike. I've pretty much had to quit giving up soccer. So I felt like, well, I really ought to do this now while I am still pretty mobile um, before my knees seize up completely um, and get good value out of it over the next few years. That was the main reason for buying now. Um, with a supportive wife, uh, that meant that we could go ahead and do it. I decided to buy new to make sure that I got all the latest safety features for the vehicle. Um, we've always bought new cars with, I think, one exception, because we generally keep them until they become unreliable. So I placed the order in late December and now have the typical RV buyer's wait. Uh, expected to be several months late spring before I actually get hold of it. And I'm hoping that um, by then, certainly over the summer, that interstate travel becomes a bit easier as hopefully we get the coronavirus under control. So as with all RV manufacturers, when you make a purchase, you typically got a whole bunch of options to choose from. And I'll just go through uh, fairly briefly what options I got and why I got them. So I might have to look at this list to make sure. Um, so the model was the Coach from Beyond 22C, which is an all wheel drive option, silver color exterior, the other choice being white. Uh, with the interior seating color cashmere and the interior wood color white. Uh, I splashed out on a lithium battery system that ends up replacing a generator. So you get quite a lot of use, um, quite a lot of power out of the batteries. And uh, I felt like um, I didn't really want to generate it. It's one more thing that could break down, plus it's, they're noisy. Even the quiet ones still make a fair amount of noise. I got the ProAir 12 volt AC upgrade and the Cozy Wrap upgraded insulation. I live in New England after all and it gets pretty cold, so. Um, I got the induction cooktop. I was dithering over that versus the uh, two ring gas burner. And I felt in the end that uh, I would then, with the induction cooktop, there wouldn't be any gas fumes in the vehicle. And it would also mean that the gas tank would be used exclusively for the trimmer hot water and heating system. So there would be more gas for that. I got upgraded seat covers. Uh, the bike rack, now I've got a Kuat bike rack for my car, which I could easily put on the hitch of the van, which is what I was going to do. Uh, I was going to put a swing away uh, on it so that I could swing the bike rack 
out of the way when I was opening the rear of the van door. And the reason for that was that um, I'm a bit uncomfortable putting all the weight of the bike rack and the bike on the van door. A um, bit concerned about how good that is for the van door. But in the end, I decided to get the bike rack on the ground so I could easily take it off if I didn't want to use it. And it would make the departure angle better than having a bike rack sticking out on the hitch. And uh, also make it a little bit easier for parking. What else? I didn't bother with the upgraded front cover, window covers. I um, heard they're pretty heavy and people just get lighter alternatives. I, I asked for it to be built without the awning. Um, that's not really an option, but I have heard that you can order it without the awning. Uh, awnings are just one more thing that can break. They get stuck out. Um, and uh, yeah, they're good for cover in the rain to get in and out of the vehicle. Um, not so sure about how good they are for a cover from the sun because uh, the sun isn't always in the right place where the awning would, uh, would make sense. A lot of people name their RVs. I'm going to name ours Rambler 4. And the reason for that, well, I'll do another short video on why it's called Rambler 4, even though it's the first, first RV I've got. I might also do another video on the things that I end up buying um, to, to go in the RV. Uh, obviously, try and make that as small list as possible um, and learn as I go along. But I know there are two things that are essential, a surge protector and um, a water pressure thingamajig to regulate the water pressure when you connect to the campground water. I'm sure it's got a real name other than thingamajig, but I can't remember the name for now. So um, that's it, really. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll see if I can answer them. Otherwise, bye for now.